Chevelle, number one, best-selling intermediate in the country. Again in 70, it's your year to rule the pack with Chevelle. Top of the heap, king of the hill, cream of the crop, rest on the bill. Back in the pack, poised, ready to close the gap behind the leader, are Ford's Torino and Pontiac's Tempest Le Mans. We'll check them out, and later, We'll pit Chevrolet 116-inch wheelbase wagons against Torino wagons. But first, the passenger car model lineup. Chevelle is neatly simplified and consolidated into four models plus the SS options. Both Torino and Le Mans prefer model proliferation with ten models each. They're probably hoping for the best instead of facing the inevitable problems in ordering and stocking. What's new? Fairlane 500 is now a series in the Torino line. Top of the line Torino Brougham has concealed headlamps and four-door hardtop models debut in the Torino line. Now, let's get a closer look at Torino. Torino's so-called all-new styling is something of a puzzle. Up front, it's a stretched-out T-Bird. Body copied from GM's intermediates. Rear, courtesy of Dodge Charger. Except for the tail lamp design, borrowed from the 69 Camaro. Put all the styling pieces together and Torino's like the eager bridesmaid. Something old, something new, something borrowed, etc. The something new is here on the chopped sports roof models in Torino GT and Cobra series. While the roof may help the performance car image, there's a great sacrifice in both visibility and interior comfort. It's so low that a medium tall driver sits with his head virtually up against the roof, a true tortured test on even level city streets. Now let's check the other competitor, Pontiac's Tempest Le Mans. Call Le Mans the best of the rest, but still not in a class with Chevelle. Chevelle and Le Mans have identical body structural elements, and more than 20% of their basic components are interchangeable. But Le Mans costs $131 more than a comparable Chevelle. For what? Construction? Better ride? Resale value? Superior handling? Wider selection of options? Le Mans can't claim a single advantage over Chevelle in any of these areas. The fact is that the $131 premium is for the Pontiac nameplate. That's the biggest difference between the two cars. Now the moment of truth. Let's put both contenders against number one. Start here with front end styling. We'll give all three grills four star ratings. But bumpers are what sets Chevelle apart from the rest of the pack. Chevelle's bumper is man-sized, wrapping around and under the front end. Torino's smaller bumper can't give as much protection, while Le Mans bumper and grille are a single unit, an expensive proposition for replacement. And both the also-ran bumper valence panels are exposed to weather and road hazards. Front end arithmetic is simple. Chevelle adds up to a better car. Zeroing in on Torino, despite their all-new claims, Underneath, it's the same old Ford. Torino's borrowed concealed wipers stop short, leaving the raw glass exposed and unsightly. Chevelle has a protective molding, and Chevelle has an automatic washer cycle feature. Torino's washer button has to be held in manually as long as water is needed. At freeway speeds, that's about the last thing a driver needs. Plus, your Chevelle and intermediate wagons have construction features like inner front fenders and flush and dry rocker panels to put water, road salt, and other corrosive elements back where they belong, on the roadbed. No comparison here. Torino offers neither feature. Two more of their construction shortcuts. Side construction, again, all Chevelle. Side guard door beams for more side impact protection. Torino would have added the beams this year if Ford could have produced them inexpensively. You have them despite the expense. One of the reasons Chevy's the number one team. By far, your biggest construction advantage is Chevelle's full perimeter frame. The all-new Torino still has the old unitized single-body construction. Ford's 1970 $6,000 Lincoln Continental was built on a full frame for the first time this year leading to claims for a better and quieter ride. While the expensive Lincoln rates a full frame, the all-new Torino doesn't. Every Chevelle, from the first ever built, has used a full perimeter frame. Length? Torino's a full five inches longer than Chevelle and four-door models. Le Mans is even longer. But is that extra length really an advantage? 
At 206.2 inches, Torino is even longer than the 1958 full-size Ford. That additional length could be a backward move in view of the growing buying trend toward intermediates. Certainly, interior roominess isn't a factor in the longer length of Le Mans and Torino. Chevelle equals or exceeds the competition in nearly every category. And rear legroom in Chevelle two-door models is actually greater than in comparable Torino and Le Mans models, despite their extra length. Again, aiming at Torino. Chevelle has interior appointment features that Torino can't match. Chevelle's crank-type windows use the extra hardware required for passenger convenience. The Torino stays with the cost-cutting knuckle-buster variety. Chevelle uses foam padding in the front and rear seat cushions. Torino and Le Mans use foam in the front seat cushion only. Chevelle's seat backs are an inch and a half higher than Torino's too, providing added support and comfort. Instrument panels? Chevelle's is easy to read, accessible, big car quality all the way. Le Mans, virtually a carryover from 69, finishes second. Torino's is almost a direct carryover from the 69 Falcon. Chevelle also has a bigger steering wheel than Le Mans and Torino. Your customers can order an optional tilt wheel, too. Torino gives no such choice. Supremacy over Torino continues in Chevelle's integral glove box. Wider, deeper, a finished job. The ashtray comes out easily for tidy, quick cleanup. Torino's glove box is made of cardboard, and their ashtray can create real problems when you try to eject it from its flip-down track. Another Chevelle finishing touch, caps. Neatly placed on the anchor bolts for the front seat belts. Torino's get the exposed, unsightly treatment. Chevelle finishes the job. Torino finishes back in the pack again. Visibility? Chevelle wins again. In the windshield alone, Chevelle offers almost a hundred more square inches of exposed glass area over Torino. Fifty more inches than Le Mans. And Chevelle's radio antenna is embedded in the windshield, while Torino has the old-fashioned mass type mounted outside. Back in the trunk are more Chevelle pluses. Chevelle has a protective cargo guard, a covered gas line, protective hinge guards, a full-width trunk floor, and a tie-down provision. Torino's not even in the same league. Witness the exposed gas line and wiring. No cargo guard, no hinge guards. The top of the gas tank even serves as part of the floor. That's in the same class as the cardboard covering over the gaps at the wheel wells. Next, suspension systems. Chevelle adds a generous portion of rubber insulation at all anchorage points and body mounts. A front stabilizer bar helps keep the car level during cornering. No such provision for either Torino or Le Mans. And Torino uses the same old Falcon-type front suspension that transmits road shock and engine vibration directly to the passenger compartment. Another thing Torino doesn't have is computer-selected full-coil springs all around. Those stout-tempered steel springs with upper and lower control arms absorb rough road shock as second nature. In the rear, Torino uses stiff, multi-leaf springs that transfer driving forces from one wheel to another. When was the last time you drove a Torino? Take one for a ride. You'll see for yourself. While you're at it, step on the brakes. Another Chevelle advantage. Chevelle's brake linings are bonded. Le Mans and Torino's riveted. Worn, riveted linings can score drums, making replacement more expensive. Larger brake linings and almost 10 square inches more effective brake-facing area for Chevelle, too. Underneath Chevelle's hood is a full blanket of insulation and strong hinging. Torino's hood is uninsulated raw metal, plus its small, weak hinging is feeble alongside of number one's. Torino again finishes back in the pack with bracing material behind the grill. Chevelle has a man-sized header brace behind the grill for extra protection. You can see Torino's protection, or lack of it. To move out in performance, as well as style, Chevelle's power parade is more versatile than ever. The scoreboard reads 20 power team combinations for Chevelle, 17 for Torino, and a skimpy 12 for Le Mans. Another big Chevelle advantage is resale value. All cars were competitively priced to begin with, but year after year, Chevelle's worth more. A 69 Chevelle four-door sedan is worth $2,375, $160 more than 69 Fairlane 500, and $90 more than Tempest.
Same story all the way back to 65. Chevelle, $1,035. $150 more than Fairlane and $195 more than Tempest. That's an advantage where it counts, in your customer's pocketbook. It's the same story in your intermediate wagons. In 70, you have what it takes to rule the wagon pack, too. Ford salesmen try to sell the longer wheelbase on Torino passenger cars as an advantage. But in wagons, where wheelbase really counts, Ford brings up the rear. At 114 inches, Torino wagons finish second best to your 116-inch wheelbase wagons by 2 inches and almost 150 pounds. That extra margin is an important asset in ride, comfort, and road stability. Remember Ford's highly advertised three-way magic door gate? In their intermediate wagons, it suddenly becomes a two-way door gate, and the tailgate window must be open to use the door. Chevrolet's walk-in feature is identical, except in measurements for intermediate or full-size wagon buyers. Still on the tailgate subject, check up front on the Torino controls. Try and find the tailgate power switch hidden on the door side of the instrument panel. All Chevrolet controls are clearly visible and easy to reach. Another example of Chevrolet's standard value is power front disc brakes. They're standard on Concours Estate, Concours, and Greenbrier V8 wagons. Only the Torino Squire has them as standard equipment. Your customers also get more here in maximum floor length, 116.8 inches, while Ford stops short at 109.5 inches. In minimum width between wheel housings, Chevrolet outdistances Ford by 2 inches, 44 and 1 half inches to Ford's 42.6 inch width. Any way you measure it, you're up front, ahead, and leading the pack. In intermediate wagons and in Chevelle passenger cars, Chevelle arithmetic gives you the advantages to lead the field. Below outstanding resale value, add true 70 styling, a simplified consolidated model line, solid finished construction, ideal wheelbase dimensions, true intermediate length that most buyers prefer, plus greater interior roominess in important categories, luxury interiors, maximum visibility, Superior suspension with computer-selected springs. Performance plus with up to seven engine choices. Versatile power teams to satisfy every prospect. Any way you add it up, Chevelle is the number one buy in the intermediate market. Again in 70, rule the pack with Chevelle. We get the Yeah.